Hello there. Welcome to this talk about emergency laryngectomy management. I'm going to review the algorithm published by the National Tracheostomy Safety Project. This details the emergency management of a patient with a laryngectomy. This algorithm was published in the journal Anesthesia in 2012. So looking at the algorithm, at first it seems that there is a lot to it. But once you break it down into manageable sections, it becomes a lot easier to understand and apply. And that is what I will be doing in this talk today. So hopefully by the end of it, you have a better understanding of the steps involved in managing and assessing a patient with a laryngectomy, and also have the confidence to apply it in a real-life clinical situation. So, at the top, the start of the algorithm. The first step is to call for expert airway help. Next, as in any life support situation, assess the airway and the breathing. Assessment is by looking, listening and feeling for breathing at the patient's mouth and at the laryngectomy stoma for 10 seconds. There are a couple of adjuncts you can use to assist your assessment. First, the Mapleson C circuit, also known as a water circuit. To use this, you can attach it to a paediatric face mask or LMA and apply it to the anterior neck. The reservoir bag provides visual confirmation by its movement if the patient is breathing. Also, waveform capnography can be attached and is another method to give visual confirmation of breathing as it gives a pictorial display of the CO2 concentration in expired air. With this assessment, you want to find out if the patient is breathing and depending on the outcome, you will respond differently. If the patient is breathing, then apply high flow oxygen to the laryngectomy stoma. If you have any doubt about whether the patient has a laryngectomy, then apply oxygen to the mouth and nose as well. Bear in mind, laryngectomy patients have an end stoma and cannot be oxygenated via the mouth or nose. If the patient is not breathing, then you will need to assess for signs of life and if necessary, begin CPR. The next step is to assess the patency of the laryngectomy stoma. Assessing patency can be broken down into two sequential steps. Step 1. Try to pass a suction catheter through the laryngectomy stoma. Step 2. Look, listen and feel at the laryngectomy stoma. Before trying to pass the suction catheter, bear in mind that the patient may have a laryngectomy tube with an inner tube or a stoma cover in place. So you will need to remove the stoma cover or inner tube of the laryngectomy tube if either is present in order to enable you to pass the suction catheter. When you pass the suction catheter, if the stoma is patent, the catheter should pass easily into the trachea. Once you have done this, use the suction catheter to suction the trachea. Also, ventilate via the stoma if the patient isn't breathing, and then continue with your ABC assessment. If the suction catheter doesn't pass, you would then move on to the second step in your assessment of the patency of the laryngectomy stoma. To do this, you will first have to deflate the cuff of the tracheostomy tube if it's present, and look, listen and feel again at the laryngectomy stoma. You should feel air flowing from the laryngectomy site at the front of the neck. And again, you can use the Mapleson C circuit or waveform capnography to assess for signs of breathing. If this improves the patient's clinical condition, continue with your ABC assessment. If you find that the suction catheter does not pass and deflating the cuff doesn't improve the patient's condition, then you will need to remove the tracheostomy tube from the laryngectomy stoma and reassess at the stoma with your look, listen and feel. Also, reapply oxygen to the stoma and use waveform capnography or the Mapleson C circuit in your assessment of breathing. If the patient is breathing, then continue with your ABC assessment. If they are not breathing, then you should assess for signs of life and start CPR if necessary. The final section of the algorithm deals with emergency oxygenation. 
This is when you have removed the tracheostomy tube and there are still no signs of breathing. In this situation, you move to your primary emergency oxygenation strategy. Attempt ventilation via the laryngectomy stoma with either a paediatric face mask or LMA. If this doesn't work, then you will have to proceed to your secondary emergency oxygenation manoeuvre. This involves intubation of the laryngectomy stoma. To do this, you will need either a small tracheostomy tube or a size 6 cuffed endotracheal tube. Don't forget, you might want to consider using equipment to aid your intubation, such as an Aintree catheter, fibre optic scope or bougie. So that's the complete algorithm. It gives you a clear, structured and stepwise approach to managing an emergency involving a patient with a laryngectomy. So to recap, in the event of such an emergency, the first step is to call for expert airway help. Next, assess for signs of breathing with your look, listen and feel at the mouth and the laryngectomy stoma. Apply high flow oxygen to the patient's laryngectomy stoma if the patient is breathing. If you have any doubt about whether the patient has a laryngectomy, apply oxygen to the face as well. If the patient isn't breathing, check for signs of life and start CPR if necessary. Next, check the patency of the laryngectomy stoma. First, try to pass a suction catheter. If that doesn't work, then deflate the tracheostomy cuff if present and look, listen and feel again. If that doesn't work, then remove the tracheostomy tube, assess for breathing again. If there is no breathing, then you will have to progress through your primary and secondary emergency oxygenation manoeuvres. This algorithm and further information can be found on the National Tracheostomy Safety Project website. That's all for this talk. Thank you for listening, and I hope you found it useful.